Hello, it's Emma Jo here from Lavinia Stamps and in this video, which is Lavinia Tours 9, oh, 9, <laughs> part 1, I'm going to be showing you how to make all the little bits that we're going to use to put together to create our story. So this is the preparation stage, if you like. Don't worry, there's going to be lots to do. There's going to be stamping galore. OK, um, I'm not going to chat anymore. Come with me. Let's go have a go. Righty ho, off we go. And we're going to start by making inky backgrounds. And for this, I've got six pieces of B7 Multifarious card which I'm placing nicely out into patterns. So using a stencil brush size 9 and some Elements Ink green sleeves, I'm just putting some ink on the first four. Now you can see the top two I've done at the top and the next one I've done in the middle. All I'm doing is using a, a, the similar palette of colours um, to make sure they all blend in nicely together. So this is Elements Ink Lime Punch. So on the top one, I'm just putting that underneath and blending it with the green sleeves. And then I've skipped the middle one and I've gone to the top of numbers five and six, if you like. Now I've got Elements Ink Pine here and I'm just popping that colour on the bottom of the top two. Now you can probably see that what I'm doing is I'm putting the colour into my lid to make sure that I get a nice coverage on my brush. There we go. And so the next two, three and four, I've given them some pine, Elements Ink Pine, on the top. So that's my top stripe, if you like, my blendy wobbly stripe. All right, so this is Elements Ink Sundance. So that's that lovely flash of yellow that we're getting at the bottom. So I'm really looking at fresh green tones that sort of turn autumnal. It's rather lovely. Again with the Sundance in the middle of the bottom two. And then this is Elements Ink Henna. And that just starts at the bottom and builds up towards, the, well, blends out towards the middle. And then we've got some Elements Ink uh, Russet Orange that's just given it that hint of autumn. Now you can see I've got a fan brush here. I've just sprayed some water on my craft mat, lifted up some water and sprinkled it on by tapping the brush. And then I've lifted it off and we've got some lovely effects with that. So three, two, one, back in the room. We've got some more B7 Multifarious card. And I'm using the acrylic spray, so I've just used some sun yellow and now some cranberry red and now some chartreuse. Giving it a good squirt and then we add water. So again with that spray bottle, quite handy this time round. And we're just spraying that colour so it covers the paper nicely. And just drying it off with a bit of that Ranger Heat Tool. Now with our uh, stencil brush size 9 again, I've got Elements Ink Russet Orange and I'm just adding little touches of it. I'm not worried about it being blocky. You can see that there are definite swirls there, but you might understand this a little later. Okay. So it's got a lovely autumn orange autumnal feel. Right, this is Playful Pumpkin and Ickle Pumpkin Stamps. And we're just going to fill those four sheets up with 
pumpkin faces. Now, I'm not overlapping them. I'm not trying to be clever, if you like. I am just filling them with pumpkin faces because it's a suggestion. What we're going to use these for is just a suggestion. You could use DL card if you'd like, but it's completely up to you. Right, this is the text area. It doesn't look like it now, but it will be. So this is the Swing Bed Large stamp, and we're using Versifying Claire Warm Breeze ink. And we just do that three times for this one. And that pattern in the warm breeze on the white background just looks sort of also almost um, Wedgwood porcelain-y. It's lovely. So I'm just drawing around the shape of this. OK, leaving a bit of a gap. Now, I'm going to tell you now why for. I am drawing around this shape to make it look like a spoon. OK. Rather a chunky spoon. But this is Lavinia land. We'll go with that. So use that first one as a template to draw around for your other two. OK? Until you get three spoons. It's not two soups and it's not four candles. It's three spoons. Soup kitchen. Off we go. I A5 multifarious card this time and some Elements Ink Sundance and yet again the stencil brush size 9. Popping some colour down on that card. Gentle colour. And this is some Elements Ink Russet Orange. So we're just popping a touch of that onto where we've got the Elements Ink Sundance and then at the bottom of the card. And this is our Elements Ink Henna. It's a lovely earthy colour. So using your Pumpkin Lodge stamp, ink it up with Versifying Claire Nocturne and stamp it over the yellowy-orangey bit. There is no technical term for it. We'll go with that. And now to rip. Just rip around the shape of the pumpkin lodge and if you think those edges look a little bit too wide you can always go back in and just take them down to the right size you see how I'm doing there and then those edges that were bright white before just color them in with some Elements Ink Sundance coloring the kitchen so I've got here some Kuretake Clean Colour Real Brush Pens in Citrus Tones and I'm just going to tell you the colors so that's a pale green and I'm just going around the shape of the vine. I'm not being too fussy because actually just the colour behind it lifts it and makes it look green and fresh. And we'll add more to it later anyway. But as a start, it's fab. And I'm just putting a line underneath so we've got a bit of ground, uh, ground in the fresh mid-green. Going up that stalk, that lovely twisty stalk. Do love it. And obviously having a stop for a think. <laughs> so I've decided the left hand side is going to be brighter than the right, which means our sun is coming in from the left. Again, a little bit of that green on the ground. So this is the orange and I'm starting to colour in the pumpkin. And this is a paler orange that I've... So I've started with the orange at the bottom and midway I've changed through to the paler orange. And pretty soon I will change to the yellow. Just remembering that each of the... The left-hand side of each of those stripes is going to be lighter because that's where the sun's going to hit. So this is that bright pink, which is lovely. Just a touch of that at the base and then bring it up with our bright orange. As in blend it up. And this is the paler orange again. Bringing those colours up. It's stunning pens, these. And this is the 
paler orange that we're using there. Super. You could keep going with this forever. So really just keep doing this until you are happy. Now I have got this as the a nice bright blue actually, almost teal like, that I've just done a bit of the door with and some violet. And I'm just going along those steps too. Back with a pale green on those stones by the steps and over the steps as well. Now we've got some lovely dotty detailing within the stamp so just pick your colours. I've chosen a bright pink and a red to just outline the door and add some of the dots. And the other side of the stones <clears throat> that will be darker, just colour those in pale grey. And now do a swirly path. And use your grey to add any shadowing that you feel you need there. Okay, what are we up to now? Posca pen accents. Hurrah! So grab your yellow Posca and add some accents dots here and there on your lovely pumpkin lodge. And some highlights on that lovely twisty stalk. Remember where the sun is going to hit it, on the left. There we go, and even on the top of those stones, just little touches. Posca pen aqua green can't do anything without this beautiful pen colour. Touches on the door, jobs are good and add some white. It's only little dots of it. And it just adds that touch of magic. Okay, so that's around the window frame, just on the left-hand side and the door on the left too. Fab. So on the left of the steps and left of the stones. Now we're adding shadows to hint at a shape. So I'm using the Kuretake Clean Colour Real Brush Pens in, oh, it's not, hard, not easy to say, in pale grey and just going around the outside and using a little brush to add some water to it and just take it a little bit further around the edges. Now you can see me doing a half circular shape. It doesn't have to be exact. I'm thinking these spoons are going to be handmade and completely original, each one unique even. So we're just doing a shape to give the impression that perhaps this could have held something like soup. A sign! Hurrah! So again, multifarious DL card. Verse Fine Claire, Warm Breeze and the Large Swing Bed Stamp. This time, can you hear the bird? I don't know if you can. Sorry, there's a bird tweeting. Uh, pale green, Kuretake clean brush, real, clean, clean colour, real brush pens. Oh, it's a tongue twister, I tell you. That's going on some of the details. And then a darker green is going on the right hand side. So you remember what we were saying about the sun coming in for them from the left? Anything that looks like it would be hit first by a ray of sunshine is going paler. Anything that looks like it would be in shadow, so it's more to the right, that's going to be in a darker shade. So I've gone with this olivey green.
So you see what I mean? That's the inside of the swing bed that is being coloured and the outside on the right hand side because the light will hit the things that are on the left. So on the left hand side of the swing bed it will be mostly pale but then when you go over to the right hand side of the swing bed it will be the inside edge of that right swirls and twirls that will be paler. Does that make sense? I do hope so. There we go. So we're going in with the pale again just to go onto the bits that would be hit by the sunshine first. I know the sunshine is imaginary, but you do, you just got to go with me. Right? And it would hit the inside of the twirls and swirls. There you go, see? On the right hand side. But you can use it to just bolster your colour and give it depth as well. Now, this is from the vine set. Those lovely flowers. And I thought, oh my goodness, pumpkin flowers are that beautiful orange. But let's use some of that brilliance, Planetero inks. And this is cosmic copper. But we're going to add a little bit of colour within that. Okay, so put that little rocket away. And this is yellow Posca pen for the centre of the flower. And we're bringing that yellow from the Kuritake pens into the colour. And you can see it lifts the copper. Lovely. Pumpkin flowers. So again, we're bringing our pumpkin flowers to our pumpkin lodge. So it's that brilliant cosmic copper again. A yellow center to the flowers. And around the edges, if it helps. Makes them easier to see sometimes, doesn't it? And then I've got my Pigma Micron 0.5 black, that just to add any detail I feel I want to add, and some white as well. And you can see the colours, the more colours you add, I mean, that doesn't mean, I don't mean go mad, but the more that you put little bits of colour on, the more those flowers suddenly start to have more depth. And we rip. When all else fails, rip. And so that's what we're doing. We're going around the shape of this swing bed. But of course, this is actually going to be a sign. So I'm using a fair bit of Posca pen aqua green and some yellow. Just dot along the way. And with my Pigma pen that you've seen me use before, I'm just writing the words pumpkin soup. And the Pigma pen, I quite like using it because it's so, um, so thin, you know, that you can, you can write clearly on it and get the basics down before you decide if you're going to go over it with Posca pen. So I'm just putting all the dots and extra twiddles in with my pen and building up that colour. So I'm making sure that the P and the S of pumpkin and soup are quite a, a bigger. Um, I mean this isn't a calligraphy class you know that this witch wouldn't have <laughs> wouldn't have done an extra special sign. Just do a sign in the character of your witch and don't worry about your writing but I tend to think that really simple writing with dots on the end looks really characterful. So I've just used some very pale 
green underneath pumpkin soup and put some water with it and that's that Kuritake brush pen just to give it a bit of shadow. Now I'm adding some white Posca pen to the flowers. and giving any highlights I feel that might be necessary. And a little bit of the orange around any of the letters that have, you know, a hole in them, like the P and the O. And finally, with a little bit of pale grey, I'm going around the inside of the sign. Around the words, and then in dark grey. And slowly it sort of lifts and comes to life. But I love this swing bed stamp because it's got that feeling of pumpkin vines. Fab. Now with your stencil brush size 9 and some Elements Ink Sundance, just colour in the edges of that sign with some yellow. Let's deal with the chef. So our chef is going to be stamped. She's Willow the Witch on some multifarious DL card. And we're stamping her with Versifying Claire Nocturne. And her cauldron is being stamped in Versifying Claire Warm Breeze. So with our stencil brush size 9, give her a background of Elements Ink Sundance. And a ground underneath her dress and of Elements Ink Pine. And I'm just using some uh, a Posca pen, aqua green, along the edge of her frock. Just to give it a few highlights and make it more visible. And I don't want her to look like a nasty witch. Because after all, she's making this beautiful, magical concoction. So we've got glittery Posca pen orange around her the top of her wand or staff and some little dots above the cauldron and that's Posca pen yellow and this is the Kuritake clean colour real brush pens and the mid green so we get some ground underneath her and I'm a great fan of this wiggly line gives the illusion of a foreground which is fab so we've got some dark gray going across the top and a little bit of yellow goes around and round and round like magic is buzzing at the end of that i don't know if it's a walking stick a staff a wand you you make up your own mind and this is pigma micron the 0.5 and i'm just going around some of the bubbles that i drew to give them a bit of substance and again we rip Just go around the shape of our, our chef. And colour those edges with Elements Ink Sundance and a size 9 stencil brush. Ah, oh, but don't forget the mice. Oh my goodness, don't forget the mice. So we've got our circles against. Um, this is Multifarious B7 card, Elements Ink Sundance, Blue Atoll, Green Sleeves and Russet Orange. And we are going to use the Mini and Moo stamps and Tilly and Tango. But we might stamp them more than once. Depends on how many you want. That's a touch of Green Sleeves. I've obviously decided somebody else needs to come and play too. There we go. So we're just using element um, Versifying Claire Nocturne for that. Now this is the Wet Wing stamp, again in Versifying Claire Nocturne, and we don't need the whole stamp, so I'm just literally stamping the edge where the wings are, because those are the wings we're going to use for our mice. So I'm just using the colours 
to colour in the white ripped edges and I'm now sticking sticking the wings on the back of our mice's mice sorry and my friends you did it well done well I bet you're wondering what on earth we're going to use all these little bits for well you'll have to find out next time I hope you've enjoyed yourself Thank you very much for having a go with me. I uh, thoroughly enjoyed today. If you've got any questions about this craft, please pop them in the post below and I will do my best to answer your questions as soon as I possibly can. OK, so in the meantime, you take care and happy crafting. <laughs>